in this series of videos, I'm going to go through the Hacker Rank Interview Preparation Kit. Now, this is going to be helpful for anybody, whether it be college students, new grads, even all the way up to senior engineers that are looking to refresh some of these skills. And typically in these technical interviews for software engineering, your interviewer is going to expect you to know your data structures and your algorithms. And typically the questions that they ask, at least for a, a, a normal software engineering role, they're going to pull their questions from a site like HackerRank or Elite Code. Now, there are some domain-specific roles like iOS engineering or front-end engineering uh, that they'll, they'll do in more domain-specific questions. Like for front-end engineering, they may ask for HTML, JavaScript, CSS questions on top of these data structures and algorithm questions. Now, HackerRank really nicely laid out what's expected. They uh, categorize the data structures and the algorithms and uh, they even go into more patterns um, by patterns i mean um, there's a lot of overlap between these these questions and you can use certain problem solving techniques to solve a wide variety of questions so even if you don't get a question that's specifically from hacker rank or lead code you can still solve these problems so jumping right into the warm-up challenges uh, the first question we're going to do is sock merchant. Now the problem statement for this is, so John works at a clothing store and he has a large pile of socks that must he must sell by color. And then you're given an array of integers which represents the socks and the color of the sock. And what we need to do is pair the socks by color and then return how many pairs that we have. So they give an example of n equals 7, and then they give an array. So there's one pair of 1, one pair of 2, and then uh, we, have a single, we have a single 1 and then a single 3 that we can't pair up anymore. So they give some sample input and then an explanation of the pairings for that input. So within here, so when you're doing these questions, you really want to make sure that you're talking through your thought process. Usually when I'm answering these questions, I also like to do some commenting within my code. These interviews are usually very high stress and it, it's easy to get lost in your own mind and for get certain things that you need to do. So going through um, this problem, so we go back up to the problem statement. So we're given an array. We want to iterate through this array and keeping track of the pairs. And we also want to make this as efficient as possible while we're doing this. Uh, time complexity is a big component of these interviews and you, you'll be expected to tell the interviewer the runtime of your algorithm at the end. Okay, so let's do some, solving these problems, I'd like to do some sanity checks first. Usually the interviewer is gonna throw in either some invalid input or very large input to see how your algorithm is gonna handle, handle those weird cases. So I'm, I'm going to do some sanity checks, and I know this is an array of sock types, so I need to iterate through socks, and then I need some way to count the pairs of socks, and then return pairs. So up first, I'm writing this in JavaScript, if you couldn't tell. I want to check if the array is valid. So if it's not valid or the array length for whatever reason doesn't equal the number of socks that they return, I'm just going to return zero. And then what I also like to do first is set up my return type. So I know I need to return the number of pairs. 
and I'm gonna initialize that as zero to begin with. And at the bottom of my my function, I'm just gonna return number of pairs. So now we need to iterate through this array. So we can set this up. And then we can pull the sock, a specific sock out of this array. Okay, so now we have the sock. We know the sock type, at least the color type of the sock. Now we need, my hunch is we need some way to count. Count each individual sock. And I also wanna do this efficiently. Uh, we can search through this array again, but that increases the time complexity and that's not necessary in this case. So we can sacrifice a little bit of memory by setting up a, a hash table. I'm gonna call this sock type count, set that equal to new map. Within this map, pulling out key value pairs, this instant access, so I'm not gonna artificially inflate my time complexity. So I have the individual sock that I pulled out of this array. I wanna see if that is sock exists within my sock type count. So let's do the first case first. We haven't seen the sock before, so we need to set the top sock type count to one since this is the first time. So first value is the key, second value is the the value, and that's gonna be one. Otherwise we've already seen that sock. So we can do a a new count. get the number of socks we've previously seen of this color, increment it by one. And now we can set that new sock count. Okay, so I think this just about does it for keeping count of each sock color. And now we have instant access to those socks. So the time complexity currently is n, since we only iterated through once. At least iterated through the data set that we're given. The data set would be the array of socks. So now we need to do something about the pairs of each sock. So we can we can go through each key of this map. And then we can look at the count. Change just the type, just so it's easier to read. So sock type count, and we're gonna get the type, the count of the type of sock. Now we need to do something about the pairing. So we already set up our number of pairs variable. And then what we could do here, we can add it to the current number of pairs and change this. So the pairs map that four, and then we can do pairs divided by two. So now we got the the even number of pair pairs of those socks. 
and then we're just adding that to our previous count of the number of pairs and then we're returning that so we can go down we can run the solution and then it passes the sample output let's submit this and see if it's accepted running test cases and it looks like everything passed now if you guys have any alternative ways of solving this let me know uh, the time complexity in this case was o of n since we're only iterating over our given data set once uh, we're also doing this other for loop but it's only looping over the keys and um, as the number of socks grows um, the number of socks is going to vastly outweigh the number of sock types so thanks for watching and stick around for the next video for the next problem